cocok. Ông chúng tôi chúng ta phải cả một tổ cái chúng ta cần để đi sản phẩm cả sản phẩm cả được ngày nay ông chúng ta thử sản phẩm cả tập đoàn để sản thản bắt bên chọc cách vi phạm thì đầu bỏ cái phi này nên không cần làm được sản phẩm phí sản phẩm phí để nâng phơi để sản thản tốt trong cõi đời bị bị cà phê cái đây chuyển chụp cháo nâng chuyển chụp cháo để nâng bậc này là bốn cứ nâng bắt đầu ở việt nam chuyển từ cầm bị bị cà phê cái đây lục ngân đồn chía thôi để sản thản tốt trong cõi mùn và một lần nằm lá cá sạm lá cá ông chụp vẽ xong chụp vẽ chun nằm lần đó thì kia để được cái đây thả để trong cái nằm lá cá sạm lá cá được thay ní lục chặt cầm già tập khốn để chia chặt cầm chiết áo vật làm miên để một là hết miên thừa đẹp trăm bảy tuổi luôn mình ai chơi luôn nằm cái nằm lá cá sạm lá cá được thay ní bàn và tôi bây giờ nhóm anh bị cướp dịp bao nhiêu mươi năm mình ai chặt cầm bình sách này ông nhầm đẹp rồi bốn giờ tôi sắm lại tay tăng lục chặt cầm thu mình ní để chia chặt cầm bầm rong khăn về kia chiết chụp nốt còn lại chặt cầm ยาวสกอนได้บรรดาวัตถุมีนในทั้งไงนี่ให้การสำหรับนี้ได้ไปหรือบัตรเป็นยัดในวิทยาเจตุบุญบุญในวิทยาในขนมบอกอย่างนี
ដែលកាត់ឡើងក្រោយរបបកម្ពុជាប្រជាធិបតេយ្យផងដែរនួនជាហាស់ in the closing brief of the 2nd of May 2007 is the result of that responsibility. has also said numerous times that the ECCC is a deeply flawed and broken institution. For instance, on the 17th of November 2015, he said in this courtroom, From day one, it was my strong impression that this tribunal was not at all interested in exploring the Instead, it seems to operate as though its mission was simply to endorse the instructions of a handful of officials in power, the by the government before the tribunal was established. And I was right. And So, when we, the Defense Council for Nunchia, had finished our oral arguments about the existential threat posed by Vietnam to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Cambodia, and had explained what the policy of the CPK really was, it was clear to Nguyen Chia that there was nothing more for him to add. There was not longer any need for him to reiterate that the trial against him is nothing but a show trial. And that the ECCC is nothing but the product of Victor's justice. Justice that only serves the interests of the American and Vietnamese aggressors. So, Mr. President, as opposed to October 2013, when Nguyen Chia did give a final statement at the end of the proceedings in case 002-01, Nguyen Chia felt this time no inclination whatsoever to respond to the rebuttal of the international co-prosecutor and his assistant, Mr. Lysak. Nguyen Chia felt that our closing brief and our closing, closing submissions speak for themselves. Cambodian history has now finally been rewritten and it is for the Cambodian public to decide if it accepts this new history, yes or no. And it is not to be decided by those who come from a country that killed and massacred so many Cambodians. So, Mr. President, that now leaves the question feel the need to respond to the rebuttal of the international prosecutor. Do I wish to address 
this ocean of misrepresentation of the evidence and this ocean of historical ignorance this complete lack of even basic knowledge of the laws of evidence in criminal proceedings not really Mr. President, not really. There are many reasons why I do not feel the need to engage in the arguments of Mr. Kumjan and Mr. Lysak. But let me give two reasons. The first reason is that it has all been said before. It has been said before, over and over and over again. When in 2013, the same two gentlemen argued their case on the mass execution of former Lonol soldiers and officials at Tupo Tre in April 1975. They literally used the same bombastic Hollywood theatrics as they did yesterday and the day before yesterday. And also then, Mr. President, they were speaking with broken voices and somehow expecting that we would all spontaneously start crying with them in the courtroom. And also, back then, there was no rigorous or dispassionate analysis of the evidence. But just to show, as if this courtroom is some sort of place. And in 2013, they also showed that same fundamental lack of knowledge and understanding of criminal procedure and evidence law. No idea, no clue, Mr. President, what the words beyond reasonable doubt actually mean. And also then, in 2013, they were just presenting you with anecdotal and selective evidence, evidence with low probative value. Meanwhile, disguising it as, as an example of some broader pattern or of a policy, and then somehow think we cannot see the right spirit. Of course we can. One would have hoped, one would have hoped that the extremely critical 2015 report of Stanford University and the 2016 appeal judgment would have made these two men change their tune. That it would have served as some sort of wake-up call. That they would have actually read and understand the judgment and that report. And of course, that they would have let sink in its legal consequences. But of course, Mr. President, they haven't changed their tune. They just keep doing right on through till the very end what they have always been doing. And when I heard them speak yesterday, I was actually reminded um, by the wise words of Defense Counsel Arthur Verdin, who was once uh, Hugh Sampan's defense lawyer. And I'm sure, Mr. President, um, that you remember these words as well, 
because you uh, reprimanded him for it. But it's four years ago, so if you don't remember, let me refresh your memory. Because this is what he said on 25 October 2013 at 9.54 in the morning during his closing arguments. And I shall read it to you in the English translation. But the original French is, of course, much more eloquent. And this is what he said. And I quote. So the question I ask is this. In setting up the prosecution team, did they commit errors? Did they unwittingly hire a gang of tourists who were about to end their holidays in Cambodia, backpackers in a hotel on the riverside, and who wanted to extend their stay in Cambodia, and who want to make a few dollars? by donning their purple robes and offering their service to the tribunal. And of course, Mr. President, the second reason I do not feel the need to engage in the rebuttal arguments of the international court prosecutors is the following. It is, my, it is my strong belief that once the Cambodian public has been granted access to and will have read our 550-page closing brief and has an analyzed its more than 4,000 footnotes, it will come to understand and realize many things. It will understand that Mr. Kumjan has not been able to dispute any of our arguments about Vietnam's aggression towards Cambodia or its plans and ambitions to establish an Indo-Chinese Federation with the help of CPK collaborators and with the backing of the Soviet Union. I am convinced that the Cambodian public will understand that our closing brief consists of real history and not of quote-unquote fake history, the word that Mr. Kumjan is so keen on using. And Mr. President, the Cambodian public will understand, for instance, that it was completely logical and lawful that someone like Runin, the secretary of the Northwest Zone, was arrested and detained after three years of meticulous surveillance and investigation. And the Cambodian public will understand, as in fact the Supreme Court Chamber has ruled, that it was Runim and his henchmen who killed those former Lono soldiers and officials at Portray. And then subsequently collaborated with Vietnam to turn Cambodia into a slave state. Collaboration with the enemy in times of war is treason and punishable by death almost anywhere in the world. Certainly in the 70s of the last century. <coughs> And the Cambodian public will understand that. 
As you will understand one day soon this year, why even the adopted son of Rumim told filmmakers that somebody and Robert Lemkin on camera that his father was rightfully arrested and executed for his treason. Mr. President, and by reading our brief, the Cambodian public will also appreciate that Runim was to Democratic Kampuchea what Osama Bin Laden was to the United States, but then ten times more dangerous. Did former United States President Barack Obama hesitated to have Bin Laden executed or hesitated to execute any of his allies, be it somewhere in Yemen or Pakistan or anywhere in the world? No, he didn't. He just used different and more advanced means, like drones. And does anyone in the West have a problem with Obama's extrajudicial killings? Not many people, I think. And do they care that Osama Bin Laden did not get a trial and was never given any due process? Mr. President, once the Cambodian public has read all 550 pages in our closing brief, you will also see that we have spent many pages discussing S21. It will see, for instance, that we address the issue, the important issue, the very limited credibility and reliability of Deutsch. That we argue in that brief that he had no knowledge of about 90% of the daily operations of S21, including matters such as arrests and interrogations of the vast majority of prisoners as well as their ultimate fate. Prisoners such as the Vietnamese, Vietnamese girl Vietnam the prosecutors the, uh, showed a photo of last week. And the Cambodian public will also read in the closing brief that we argue how the selection procedure of prisoners at S21 really went and that many people never ended up in what are, what are now the premises of the Tool Slang Museum, that they were either released uh, or sent to Prey And it will also understand what the real reasons are why we believe that Chu uh, Mai was never a prisoner in S21. And I also think that the Cambodian public will appreciate why we ask in our brief the question where the skulls and bones are of the remaining 12,000 people that were now, in addition, allegedly executed at Chiang Ek. As we know, and as, I have, and as I have said many times uh, during hearings, there are only 5,000 or so confessions, 5,000 or so photos of prisoners, and uh, 6,426 skulls found and investigated at Chang in our brief, we asked the question, if 18,000 prisoners were killed, where is the forensic evidence of the other 11,000 or so? I believe the Cambodian public understands that we asked that question. Thank you.
And I also believe it will understand that the number of 5,000 or 6,000 has a symbolical value, a symbolical value in uh, geopolitical terms. Why? Because it is roughly the same number of people uh, whose names American diplomats from the embassy uh, in Jakarta, in Indonesia, gave in October 1965 uh, to the government of President Suharto to have summarily executed. Names of teachers, trade union activists, intellectuals, etc. I refer to a brief for further details on this matter. And I also now Our refer to the footnote in our brief, how, for instance, Time magazine applauded the death of these teachers, trade union members, and intellectuals. Mr. President, today I would also like um, to take the opportunity to refer to document E3-196, that is the speech that Nunchiya gave in July 1978 to a delegation uh, of the Danish Communist Party and that Mr. Kumjan cited yesterday. In this speech, Nguyen Chia spoke at length about the dreadful fate of 500,000 victims, people who were members of the Indonesian Communist Party <coughs> or merely sympathized with this party. And in the English translation of that document, Nguyen Chia uses the words, and I quote, the blood-stained experience of the Communist Party of Indonesia, end of quote. People killed, Mr. President, with the full support of the country that Mr. Kunjan is from. That same country that would start bombing Cambodia to smithereens soon afterwards and kill at least ten times more people who were allegedly killed at SD1. And that, that number of 5,000 is, by the way, also the same number of only one single French detention facility in Algeria in the 1950s. That's a prison that Philip Short refers to in his book when he compares the alleged crimes of S21 to what the French did with the Algerians in their security centers. Does anyone remember who was Minister of Justice in France at the time and responsible for the torture and executions in these camps. Mr. President, I will give a hint. This photo was on the front page of many European newspapers early this week. The issue of the numbers and, and, and many other issues related to S21 are all things in our brief that Mr. Lysak never responded to. And the Cambodian public will realize that one day. And then yesterday, Mr. Lysak deceived the public that we were somehow afraid to address these issues. Some has, Mr. President. Let me round up. Nguyen Chia could 
couldn't care less Nun if you convict him again uh, to a life sentence. He really doesn't care because rightfully so, he doesn't take this institution seriously. But Mr. President, he does have one